Hi everyone, I'm George Castro, and today I'm going to give you a brief introductory tour to Bluefin. Uh, Bluefin is a custom image of Fedora Silverblue that's designed as a next generation Linux desktop, so it is not consumed like uh, Linux distros and is kind of a response to uh, the lack of progress that the Linux desktop has been making. So we are doing a greenfield deployment, uh, which is industry slang for starting over. <laughs> Um, but it's also just Fedora. So we take uh, Fedora Silverblue, tweak a few things, and then uh, ship it. <laughs> uh, let me give you the, the the quick tour here. First of all, it's designed to have zero maintenance. So upgrade, dialogues, things that pop up in your face that tell you to do upgrades, things like that. We fully automate that for you. You're always getting Fedora's updates every single day. Uh, and those are applied on a reboot. And for your applications, we automate the updates of your flat packs and your command line apps and all of that stuff. So as you're using Bluefin, the entire idea is not to manage your desktop because I have I have better, better things to do. We include Firefox by default, and you can, of course, always install uh, whatever browser uh, that you want. At some point, I'm going to include Thunderbird once we get offline installer capability support. And we generally include a few quality of life app applications uh, that make things easier for you. So uh, first of all, let us let me give you a quick tour. Uh, I'm gonna start uh, to, uh, at the top, left to right. Uh, so the first is this is called the logo menu. It's gonna have your uh, system dialogue thing that has like all the information about your computer. Uh, I do wanna talk about a few things that we've added. So the software center's here and uh, we only ship FlatHub by default. In, the, in this model, the entire concept of system packages that the user is installing uh, goes away entirely. So that is all done by Flatpaks, and that's it. Uh, so that's the GNOME Software Center. Uh, the system monitor, this is an interesting one. This is not the stock GNOME one. This is called uh, Mission Center, and it's just like a cool uh, system monitor that we really like. It gives you a lot of information. It's like really pretty. Um, it's got lots of great features, and that is what uh, we recommend for that. Uh, the terminal is a very unique feature of uh, Project Bluefin. We ship Tixis, which is a container-native terminal by Christian Hergert. So let me just go into the um, command line experience here in a minute. But before we do that, uh, here in extensions as well, we ship the extensions manager. So if you ever need to tweak any of the uh, things or add your own extensions, that's available to you as a quick shortcut. So the command line experience for Bluefin is different than other uh, quote unquote Linux distros. I hate that term. I use the term operating system uh, for, for for Bluefin. Is the graphical applications are handled by Flatpak, so you need something to install CLI applications. Fedora typically tells you to use Toolbox, uh, but we've watched people struggle uh, with containers and things like that. So we've actually put in some work to get homebrew uh, enabled for people so that they could just uh, get their command line applications and install them. Homebrew is a huge package repository. It's rolling, it has everything. And that's what all the Mac people are using. Uh, I have yet to run across a package uh, that wasn't in homebrew. And uh, the way you're gonna do that is follow the command that uh, the terminal tells you when you first run it. Um, because we uh, don't set that up for you. Uh, we install, instead give you instructions on how to set it up uh, because it installs in your home directory and all of that kind of stuff. In the past, we've had issues with homebrew conflicting with the host, but we pretty much nailed that. So now any application that you can think of um, is, is in there. And they also update every single day. So you always have the latest tools. Um, so if you have like a cool command line file manager, uh, any of those command line tools. Brew is great for things like your AWS tools, your Google Cloud tools, your Azure tools. All the CLI stuff that you find in the industry is going to be in there uh, because Brew switched over to OCI blobs a while ago. So as you saw there from the URLs, uh, we are grabbing all of this stuff from GitHub, uh, which is really great because that's nice and fast. And it's the same uh, registry that we are downloading the operating system from. So that's really handy. I feel like Homebrew and Flatpak together are the perfect combo, one for GUI, uh, one for CLI. There are people that believe that 
uh, that there should be one package manager. For example, Snap conflates GUIs uh, and CLI applications, and there are people who think that CLI applications should be flat packed. Um, we're not doing that. Uh, Brew has everything that people need, and instead of waiting for a magical package manager to package everything, we're just going to use we're just going to use what's out there. And that's what everyone's using it. Give this a shot. Brew is great. Um, once it's set up properly on a Linux distribution, there is no reason to uh, use your system package manager uh, at all. That's all managed for you uh, in the background and you can always uh, trigger a manual update and things like that. So that gives you that. I've got a little sheet, here, little cheat sheet here of all the stuff that we include. Um, we do include sales, tail scale out of the boxes, VPN software uh, powered by uh, WireGuard, very generous free tier. It's just what comes with it. I'm always on the right network. Um, and of course, because Network Manager has support for WireGuard, whatever VPN you're using, export that WireGuard config and you can slap it in there uh, and then you'll be good to go. For power management, we use ToonD. This is coming into Fedora and Fedora 41 probably, but got uh, punted this time around. Um, so we're, we're shipping this by default. Uh, Bazite, which is Bluefin's sister uh, custom image, which is kind of designed for handhelds and things like that. They use Tune D because they need that level of power and granularity in order to get the most out of all of those uh, devices. Tune D recently got the option to just integrate with the GNOME dropdown thing. So you just set it to balance, kind of forget about it. Um, I run this on my framework with Tune D and it's the way to go. That's what we're moving forward. Uh, we consider power management uh, to be a solved problem uh, there for us. I do want to talk a little bit about containers though with Box Buddy. So this is a great new tool that we're including that lets you grab any container from any from this list um, and fire it up as a terminal. So you have seen this before if you've been following this channel. Um, there's my Ubuntu container. You can make as many of these as you want for many versions, for as many distros as you want. And we use this to get the um, uh, software that you might need that's like legacy stuff that, you know, they don't have a flat pack or they have an old deb or something and you're trying to get something to work. You can always fire up as many of these boxes as you can. And Box Buddy's great. It gives you a button to upgrade the box. Um, there is a little tool that will show you all the applications that are installed in there and let you slap those on your dock or in your menu if you want. It's pretty cool. And then we do give you a little folder in the menus to stick all your distro boxes, uh, which is like uh, really handy. Then that brings me to Pixis, which is Pixis, which is your terminal. Uh, if you don't like that name, don't worry. Searching for terminal will still uh, fire it up here. Uh, and this also has integrated support for all those boxes as well. So you have that here. Uh, so in order to get all, all the access that you need, if you need any of that old quote unquote old distro stuff. So that is in there. We also have pre-made service units and management units of all the distro boxes that we provide. Uh, we still need to do a better job of tying that up there in box buddy. So you can just have uh, what you want. So with flat pack homebrew, and then you fall back to these containers if, if you need to, that very much handles the, um, uh, just about every piece of software that's out there. So uh, this is basically it. The, um, there's a developer experience edition, which I'll be covering in a separate video. Uh, this is kind of the stock uh, Bluefin. You could give this to anybody, anyone who's used Linux before, uh, can figure out brew, it's just brew search, you know, brew install, brew remove. Um, and the service units will make sure that they're always updated and things like that. I will be doing making, I will be making a separate video on Bluefin DX where we're going to cover Visual Studio Code and some of the other things that we include in here. But for most Linux users, like if you've used Ubuntu or you've used Fedora, um, this Bluefin experience here is like the default uh, that we're going with. Other than that, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. Smash that like and subscribe button. And then I'll be answering questions as usual on the forums and all that kind of stuff. So uh, try it. We're going to shoot for April 18th is what we're going to shoot for. Uh, assuming there's no delays in the Fedora's release. So um, have a great one.